Okay, so welcome to today's Homegrown Hangout. So I'm hanging out with Janine John. So Janine, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? How did you get into songwriting and worship leading? I'm based in South Wales in um, Risker. And I've got involved in songwriting from a worship perspective, really. So I've been doing worship in conferences and for many years as a worship leader, but I've always loved worship from being really young. I remember kind of being five or six and going when my parents got saved and we went to this church and I remember like going in and that sound of worship just hitting me and God just really put it within my heart that I just, I just love that sound where there was lots of people engaging him and his heart and just having a response to him really I used to feel really overwhelmed when I was younger so really my whole life um, and my my personal walk with the Lord has kind of come out of times of worship and I suppose the songwriting aspect um, comes from that really comes from my own sort of walk with the Lord and just spending time with him and asking him questions and sometimes writing those responses or if I see a, a particular scripture that I don't really understand or I want to understand on a deeper level quite often I'll kind of sing sing that out and, yeah. and it's just really cool because a lot lot of things come from that you know a lot of inner it kind of it feeds me internally but then when I've kind of then gone on to sort of release these songs I've seen how it really kind of blesses people and opens up some of the truth that's in his word for the for those people as well so okay. yeah so it's been it's been a good time what are the songs that you remember for you to talk about being a child and and experiencing kind of times of worship um are there any songs that really stand out for you from being young that have kind of stuck with you over the years um yeah actually so when i so my parents went to a church where there was um the, the pastor his name was um from south wales wingos he he was actually a singer songwriter himself and so even though he would preach the worship there was um would go on for at least an hour in our in our church and uh, he would so two things really he would he would sing a lot of um, the songs of the kind of day that were out. Like I remember one particular one I used to love, his name, his name is called Wonderful. His name, his name is called Beautiful. The Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace throughout eternity. Like that one song when I was really little, which has got quite heavy words, but I remember kind of hemming that as I would go to sleep at night. And, and just thinking, he is the everlasting father. He is the prince of peace. Like the words of that song were really powerful. And the other song um, that I remember quite vividly from my childhood, um, apart from the funny ones like um, Celebrate Jesus Celebrate, which are... Is that funny? You know, I thought you were going to say like, who's the king of the jungle or something, you know. Like, yeah, apart from those like funny ones that, you know, I don't know some people right. still sing those and other you know that's great uh, but I it kind of I look back on those songs perhaps the era that they were played it was a little bit kind of uh, cheesy at the time but um look, obviously not not then but looking back at it now um, and the other song was we had this we had this song that they used to sing um which I found a little bit uncomfortable at the time but it it kind of put the question a question within me and that was um they used to sing I see Jesus in your eyes and it makes me love you I don't know who, who wrote that song and I see Jesus in you and it makes you you care it makes me care about you and I remember thinking oh this is hot this is horrible and um, really tough but I used to think yes but we should be seeing Jesus in each other um like as much as I kind of struggled a little bit with with that um, the perhaps that the, some of the words I kind of loved the fact that the challenge of it can can we actually see Jesus in e each other um, and th those two songs really stuck 
with me and I used to be really into Amy Grant and Don Francisco and Keith Green and all you know all those kind of um, things I used to, we used to have the integrity worship album of the month come to our house as well <laughs> yeah I signed up for a Christian book club once uh, or sorry CD club and I just got sent stuff every month kind of that I didn't necessarily want but a couple a couple of the albums that I got were really good and they they were things I wouldn't have bought necessarily but because I was getting sent one every month um I experienced some really cool music and stuff so on to new songs then so you're working on some new material um I really loved your album Relocate I've told you this before but when you gave me that CD I, I didn't listen to it for a few weeks I was unpacking then a box of things from the event where I'd, I'd met you and then I was I was cleaning in my office which I don't do very often and um I stuck the CD on and I was just, I was bowled over. I was so, you know, kind of, I guess, transported by it. It was such a good project. So, so I love relocate and I'd recommend that anyone, you know, who has Spotify or Apple music listens to it or orders a CD, but you're working on some new songs. Um, so tell us about your new project. You're looking at doing a new project called Enraptured. Yes. So it's really a follow on from relocate because relocate, um so the, well, the way I tend to write songs is that I have songs which I call that are songs in the moment so I know they're you know they I might not necessarily work on them but they'll just be something I have to release because it's part of what perhaps God is speaking to me right at that moment and then there's other times where I feel there's almost like a body of work um and relocate was that where I wanted to kind of talk about um how do we set our mind you know paul says in colossians set your mind and your heart on heavenly things and um, feast on the treasures that are, are above and i kind of wanted to i'd been through this time where i was really asking the lord how how do i do that and um all all the, all the songs on relocate are kind of about us knowing that although as Christians, you know, we live in the world, we're part of the world, but we have access to the, to the father and, and his world and all that kind of surrounds him. And how do we kind of like David did kind of look past, uh, you know, the creation and see like him behind it all and kind of pull it in, into now. So that was really okay. And I felt, um, the next album, that I wanted needed to work on. There was actually two because it's been two years um, since I wrote Relocate, and I li I kind of um, write continually because we have a prayer house in Wales, and quite often sometimes we'll be singing something, and I'll I'll feel like a, you know a theme particularly is is kind of calling me almost. So then I'll spend time on that theme, and for this album in Raptured, which I'm going to be doing with you guys is all about um, union and kind of being in that, in that place. So where's relocate was me um, knowing that I, I can, it's my choice to kind of set my mind and my heart upon him. And this is kind of going a little bit deeper. Um, so when, when you've done that, all the things that we see and, and it's basically enjoying jesus enjoying what the gospel has done you know that now jesus is high and lifted up he's in that he's in the, the state where he is before the throne and he's interceding on our behalf and just like the the enjoyment of actually enjoying our salvation and the and the joy of that and the and just the delight of that and so very much a lot of the songs are about about that and um obviously the all in all that i did with you guys earlier on in the year is going to um, be on it and and you know that again is just about seeing him in everything that he's actually always present like we never leave his presence you know he is he he is the life force that holds the whole world together like if he decided not to do that we wouldn't actually exist you know he is he is life itself. So um, it's sort of seeing him, um, choosing to see him in, 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 in things, in people, in creation, in the beauty, and, and just what that does to us and the enjoyment of it. So that, that's what, what Enrapture is about. And then I'm working on a, another album called Dazzling, which is all about the glory of who he is um, and the majesty and um, 
again you know the Jesus in his glorified state as well so those those two projects but I'm really excited about in rapture particularly because I'm going to get to work with you guys so yeah it's going to going to be awesome now what I love about this Janine is is you've really kind of developed concepts around bodies of work which I think is really important because it's very easy as a worship songwriter and a worship leader to get a bit stuck in a rut of thinking this is how Sunday morning worship should be or this is how Christian worship music music should sound and here are the familiar topics that we sing about and that kind of thing so I think it's really good to explore that relationship with God which is so it's so incredible because you know as you were talking it kind of brought to mind for me this kind of um I think it was a song that Matt Redman wrote many years ago or as an album or a book or maybe all three. Uh, it's like the idea of the, fr- the friendship and the fear, you know, kind of going mm-hmm. from that real kind of personal family kind of relationship and that friendship with Jesus, but also that reverence of him because he is, he is God. He is daz- dazzling and you yeah. know, glor- glorious and huge. He's, he's the creator of all, of all things. And I think, it's so important as a writer to always be exploring and trying to find something new rather than just trying to, I think sometimes when I speak to worship songwriters, it's all about, it's all about craft. You know, that's the kind of, I'm trying to work on my craft and and find like how to get the right turn of phrase or how to get the, the hooks. And sometimes we can get lost in the craft and we maybe don't do the kind of pursuit of God, um, you know kind of exploring it keeping the relationship you know the the first the first thing i think sometimes the the best songs really come from that fresh revelation so i love the fact that you're exploring new territory and and working in concepts as well as crafting Mm. songs one by one yeah so you're you're working with us at rocket fuel as well so as as many people watching will know we we have homegrown worship at resound media which is something we've been running for the past few years and We've been running since 2014 a platform called Rocket Fuel uh, to help people raise funds for various projects. So, so why are you kind of using Rocket Fuel? Then tell us about tell us about that. Yeah, so obviously Rocket Fuel, I think, wasn't available when I did my first album, Relocate. Um, it was, but you just didn't know about it. I didn't know about it. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So obviously, I did. I raised finance to do the first album we actually were able to raise ten thousand pounds um to do that which is a huge sum of money and i'm so blown away that people (laughs) actually would support me doing an album because although i've been doing worship for many years a lot of the worship we we style that we do isn't songs it's very much kind of a tabernacle we'll sing a psalm sing around it and um, and it was actually Ray Hughes who um, inspired me to actually work on some of these songs because, you know, he said that that's part about, uh, you know, about being an artist is that you, you'll maybe take something that you, you feel perhaps the Holy Spirit on or, or and then you go and you actually wrestle with it almost you go deeper with with that particular thought or or seed or or, our idea and so it was a big thing for me to raise support for an album because i had no history (laughs) in actually doing studio songs i i could sing spontaneously any day of the week that you know that i'm very comfortable kind of in the um not knowing what we're doing and, and knowing that something amazing will come out of that but this was a very different thing for me and um I didn't know the way the people would back me but what I was so surprised at is that um there is such a hunger out there for music that carries um something deep on it and something that actually ignites people and um, I was just so blown away by people that supported it and then when it came to this next album um, and I really thought about you know and I really prayed into it you know I wasn't even though we kind of we had conversations about it I didn't initially sign up I really wanted to kind of ask the Lord about it and um, he showed me that there's going to be a community of artists that are rising up and I felt 
that I needed to kind of be sort of a, a part of that. And that's what I'm really enjoying with Rocket Fuel as opposed to just using Crowdfunder is that it's not just, you know, you can see all these other artists, especially at the moment where, you know, we've got a lot of time to be creative, but if you yeah. haven't got that spark of other people around you, it's quite, can be quite difficult. So yeah. I'm, I'm enjoying the community aspect of Rock, Rocket Fuel and just that there's just, I just feel like there's new things rising up right now and Rocket Fuel is one of those and I'm really excited to kind of see where it goes. It's a different way of, of doing something um, by raising finance. Um, but I feel, I feel like it's just, that's part of, of the new things that are coming. Yes, I could, you know, I'm actually on Patreon as well. I've got a few partners and I've done crowdfunding, but there's nothing like being part of a community as well and all kind of going after something together and um, in our all different ways in being individuals in that and having different sounds, different expressions of it, but you're still part of something bigger. So. I think that's one of the key things that we've really learned through starting the homegrown worship community is that um, so many creative people want to feel like they belong somewhere. And, you know, we live in an information age where you can learn anything. You can go and teach yourself. You can sign up for a course. You can read a book. You can Google it. You know, Google will tell you, you know, anything. And people sometimes do forget to pray, you know, because they think, well, I'll ask, I'll ask Google how to do this rather than sometimes mm. asking God. But I think, what we've learned through homegrown worship is just the the value of community so we wanted to create something with rocket fuel that will serve yes there's lots of christian artists we work with but also many artists you know local artists and people in other parts of the world um who you know are doing different styles of music from different backgrounds and different worldviews to try and create community because i think out mm -hmm. of community comes some of the best work you think about you know the impressionists in art you know so many of them pushed each other the contemporaries you know that 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 kind of healthy competition and that kind of camaraderie and all of that kind of stuff support and a bit of accountability sometimes as well i think sometimes people have these ideas and they like to do the project but they just keep the project themselves and they don't have any one around them to spur them on and to feel kind of a sense of responsibility to to deliver the project as well so so I've loved that. I've loved doing the course and, and the Facebook group. It's great to see people posting and then other people encouraging people. I've even seen some of the artists support each other's missions as well, which is amazing. You know, yeah, so yeah. getting behind each other, uh, which just um, shows the strength of, of community and stuff. So, yeah, and I think we can't be afraid that um, like that competition thing needs to go because we're all so unique. Nobody can express something the way that we alone can and and that we need many voices this to have the bigger picture there has to be many voices and no one you know i wouldn't have been able to do relocate unless people had championed me or believed in me and i think that sometimes um you know there's they, they can feel this bit of oh, competition i personally I don't feel that because I kind of dealt with that quite a long time ago. I'm in my forties now, you know, so I, I just through being around other artists, but what I've realized is that something amazing and unique can happen when you collaborate with people, when you allow sort of other voices, it actually, you know, it, it ends up taking you kind of higher or, you know, or, or to put it another way, puts um, a different sort of, color into a beautiful painting and i think that's the way that god's made us is that we're meant to spur each other on we're meant to yeah. champion each other um and because he is in that you know we love him and we love e each other so i'm so excited about um just the amount of people that are writing and being creative it's so great to see um you know on online it's really amazing yeah. Now, I think the competition word is a bit contentious, but I see, I see competition. You've got two types, really. You know, there's, there's unhealthy competition where people look at others and they get jealous and they think, oh, why are they doing better? Or, you know, even willing people to do worse so they can, they can do better. Mm -hmm. Whereas healthy competition, like I, I play tennis with um, my friend Kevin and 
you know, he's 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 great to play with because we both want to win, but we're yeah. not bothered about who wins the end of the day. We just want to both want to get better. We want to work on our shots and and play, and and we'd much rather have a good game of tennis than than win. If you know what I mean? Yeah, I think, yeah. I think, but you need to kind of you need to kind of compete in a way. You need to take it seriously, and I think that's something that we want to try and do through Rocket Fuel as help artists to, you know, to get better at what they're doing in terms of the music, in terms of how they present themselves online, how, how they take their supporters on a journey um, and all those kind of things. So, so I'd like to encourage people, have a look at Janine's Rocket Fuel campaign. There's loads of really good stuff on offer. You can buy some products, you can pre-order the projects that she's doing you can subscribe and support a monthly. You can make a donation if you just want to um, kind of get get behind her and stuff. But tell us, Janine, about your – you have a group as well. You've got the Many Voices group. So what kind of stuff are you doing there on Facebook? Yeah, so um, I'm actually – it's the first one this week. So I've started a creative community <laughs> or hub. I'm not sure what it's going to finally be called. But um, I just – felt to just have a place where um just that I can share really some of these principles I, I suppose that I've learned over the last 10 10 years and the Lord has shown me and I just feel like um there's a lot of artists right now so not just um singers and musicians but pe artists in general I feel that everyone is creating created to be by the creator to be creative and you know even preaching is an art uh, or poetry um there's so many so many things that we don't think that is um art so i wanted to create this place where um i can share some things but also maybe set some challenges where we can spark kind of encourage each other and actually cause that spark so that people um find it a little bit easier to do the thing that they're putting off in a way because most of us know what we should be doing but we do need that encouragement yeah, from each yeah. other. I'm not sure kind of how it's going to go it's it's something that the Lord um, has put in my heart and it, just at the beginning of lockdown what happened was I when lockdown happened I went to the prayer house and got my keyboard because <laughs> I thought right I'm going to do live yeah. I'm going to do live streaming that's what I'm going to do and um, the Lord actually said to me, I haven't asked you to do that. And I was like, I, I actually even posted a video. It's on my uh, YouTube channel saying that I'm going to do this live streaming. So I was like, okay, you d actually don't want me to do that. And um, I went through this um, about maybe the first two months of lockdown where um, the Lord was waking me up at three o'clock in the morning or whatever the dawn time was. And I would go and sit outside for a whole week. This happened. And I sat, sat outside, it was obviously um, warmer then with a blanket, with my Bible and stuff. And I just listened to like the birds starting to sing before the dawn. It was like kind of, they actually start singing before it gets light. And they're, they're just this, and one bird starts and then there's this noise, like this amazing, amazing noise. And um, the Lord sort of said to me, you know, there's lots of things going on in the world right now and people need the the song of the like a new song almost and um but not just a song I could see it come in in many ways like many artistic ways like there was this flood of creativity kind of going to be released and um you know that it kind of happens before the new day arrives and I feel like in many respects we're in that time now and that's why there's so many kind of people writing and um you know that is actually happening right now so I just wanted to create a place where we could kind of talk about that and just explore it I don't have all the answers but I want to go on a journey with other people to kind of find out what is the song that needs to be kind of sung with Absolutely. the hour that we're in right now so that's so good and yeah i mean it's it's such a good thing to do as you as you know you're part of our homegrown homegrown worship facebook group it's we just want to create a space where people can connect and collaborate and, and i think it's really good if you can if you can take people on a bit of a journey you know have some parameters or encouragement or like I say creative challenges people often respond really well to that because not everyone has the confidence or initiative or the experience to 
maybe start a whole new community themselves or a new project themselves. But actually when you kind of model it to people or you, you bring people along for the journey, it's so, it's so encouraging. It's such a good way to help people discover gifts they didn't know they had or to, you know, kind of reignite the flames for something that they know that they have been called to do. Um, mm. so, so I found this time really creative and I'm, I'm really pleased you have as well. So Janine, thank you so much for joining us today and for sharing a bit of your heart, a little bit of your, your story. Uh, and some of the songs that you found cheesy as a young younger person. <laughs> That's just my, my own opinion. Everyone's for, entitled uh, to their yeah, own. Courses for courses. Yeah. yeah I, some of the worst songs are, are some of the best songs. It's, it's, hard to, it's hard to decide, isn't it? But bless you. Thank you so much for your time today, Janine. And we'll, we'll catch up soon. Okay. Thank you, Andy. Right, Take care. Bye.